Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts another reading vlog, so stay tuned. Yeah, I know, I sound terrible, and that's because currently I have the flu. It sucks. It's no fun. I don't like it. But I do have medicine, so hopefully <laughs> I'll be better soon. This is day two, like the second full day of being miserable. So I haven't really gotten any reading done, but... I do have my gift for today, so I wanted to go ahead and open that up. Ooh, this is like packed with lots of stuff. So there's some flower petals. Okay, I think it goes with something that's in the box because they're talking about um, <clears throat> a wooden base. So let's just look. Apparently it comes with a gift bag. <laughs> he just wrapped the whole box. Okay. So there's a box inside of it. It's a very nice box. And it says Beauty Life. Pretty. Okay. So it's like from Beauty and the Beast, the, the rose got a little pedestal here so okay now this makes more sense it says you remove the rose from the wooden base let's see if we can put this together remove the rose from the wooden base and then we have this as well so this plugs into a USB thing like either your computer or like a phone charger Okay, I had to turn the camera off for a second <coughs> while I figured this thing out. But I got it done. This is kind of just how it goes. I don't know how. Um, okay, so there's a remote. And like, it looks like you can dim it. I don't know. Uh, so there's, this is number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. <laughs> uh, number six. Number seven. Party. Number eight. And then, yeah, you can dim it down or brighten it up. Very, very bright, in fact. Okay, I'm going to try turning the light off so we can see how it looks. That is super bright. Turn it down. Okay, I think that's as dim as it'll go. I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. So it's like almost nine o'clock now. I'm going to, I think I might try to find something to read. Cause I feel like my brain can handle reading a little something. I don't know what though. I'll let you know when I figure it out. Actually, I changed my mind. I am gonna find something to read, but I'm going to see what my reading prompts for chapter two of the magical readathon are and that can kind of help me decide what to read next 
So when you completed your reading from chapter one, you clicked on complete and it says, you make your way back to the burrow, hiding your dirty shoes by the chicken coop to be dealt with later and head back inside. It's gotten dark outside and Miss Weasley has shown you a cozy spot near the living room slash kitchen fireplace. Jenny poked her head in, but quickly ran back upstairs after realizing you were sat right there. Her cat followed her, pouncing at the pom-poms on Jenny's slippers. Percy, Ron, and the twins were discussing the latest developments in the Quidditch League whilst Mr. Weasley was reading what seemed to be tomorrow's issue of the Daily Prophet. He must have gotten it early at work. This was the life, ultimate coziness. You can't help but smile whilst you look around, sipping your hot chocolate. Congratulations, you've completed Chapter 1. Enjoy your stay at the Leaky Cauldron until Chapter 2 becomes available. And if you're still keen on adventure, we'll see you once Chapter 2 opens. If it's already open, head back to the Winter Magical Readathon home page to continue. So we go back to this page. And go to Chapter 2. Morning, it's September 1st. Yay, how did you sleep? So warm and cozy at the burrow, bones aching a bit from the old bed, or so peacefully I got my breakfast ready downstairs at the leaky cauldron. I would say at the burrow. Hogwarts Express. It's the morning of September 1st, chilly and crisp. You and the Weasleys climb into their Ford Angelia to make your way to King's Cross Station. Surprisingly, it's really spacious, especially for the amount of people in the car. There must be magic involved. Everybody's cheerful mood has been dampened a bit by the fact that you had to turn around and go back to the borough as Ginny, Fred, and George kept realizing they had forgotten something. When you finally reached the platform, everyone was walking at such a brisk pace you might as well have ran. You actually spot Hermione standing near platform nine and three quarter column. She's noticing you too and starts waving enthusiastically for you to hurry up. Just as you go to catch Ron's attention, who's been too busy to notice Hermione as he's been gawking at the muggle clothing, he trips over Jenny's luggage. Ron, watch it. Everyone halts momentarily to help pick things up from Jenny's suitcase that's popped open, spilling her belongings all over the concrete floor of King's Cross Station. Poor Jenny is red as a beet. You start to lean in to help, but Miss Weasley ushers you away. Oh dear, that's quite all right. We've got this. Move along now while there's no cue to the entrance. We are right behind you. So the options are, after double-checking they don't need more hands, you head over to Hermione to go through, or stay with the Weasleys, you want to stick with Ron. Well, I imagine that Ginny has things in her luggage that she probably doesn't want seen, like underwear and such, so I would probably go off with Hermione. You see Hermione pass through the barrier between the muggle and magical world in a very obviously nonchalant way. You follow suit by pretending to be checking for a timetable board overhead when you casually approach the brick wall. It still makes you a bit uneasy. You're expecting to collide with it, making a scene, but as your foot brushes the front of the barrier, it melts away. Your reading prompt. From mundane to magical, read an urban fantasy Usually a fantasy world that exists in secret from the muggle world. Harry Potter, for example. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. I'm not sure which books I have that will also complete Merry Book Miss challenges would fit that. So I'll have to kind of look at my books and see. I'll talk to you later. It started snowing. So I just managed to <clears throat> film a video that took forever and my head is killing me now, but it's done. And I didn't show you, but I got some book mail the other day. Um, I think it was something I pre-ordered. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I think it came, I don't remember which day it came, 
whatever day this book came out is when it came. And that is the sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. This is Children of Virtue and Vengeance. It's not nearly as thick as the first one, which is kind of a good thing because that one, she was thick. <laughs> Ooh. The end pages are really pretty. Ooh, that's also really pretty. We see all the clans here. So if you don't already know what Children of Blood and Bone is about, it's about, um, I think our main character's name is Z Zeli and, or Zeli, and her mother's been killed. I think her father was missing and the magic from her people have been has been stolen away and she has one chance to bring the magic back to her people and that's what she sets out to do and I can't really tell you anything about this one because it might spoil something for the first one if you haven't read it but I got that one now and I have today's gift I'm pretty sure I know what today's gift is just by the shape of it and it is a bath bomb this is a cake bomb an almond buttercream bath fizzer with a fun surprise inside and it's got sprinkles too I'm very much enjoying my advent Christmas this is fun if only I could not be sick and be perfect. <laughs> Alright, I guess I'm going to try to get some of this footage off my phone or off my camera onto my computer, which is going to take a while because it's got all my footage for the cruise and probably a ton of other stuff as well. So this is going to take a while. Oh, and I can't remember if I told you or not. I didn't end up starting anything for um, the urban fiction yet, but I think I found my book. I believe I'm going to read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. From, I, I asked on Twitter and on Instagram if people thought this classifies as urban fantasy, and it does, so, or according to everybody that voted, they say, I'll say yes. So, I'm looking forward to reading it. It's sort of a set in the real world, but then she gets pulled through a portal or something into this other world where the beast is cursed and all of that. Because it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Also, I don't know if I have to read these in order. Because I think that there's going to be more than one prompt for Chapter 2. And I don't know if I need to read the first prompt and then go on to the second I don't think you do so I want to go ahead and go through the rest of chapter two to see if I have any other prompts so I'm going to turn you around here I also went to turn the fan off and look it's snowing it's so pretty okay this battery's gonna die so I'm gonna go switch out the battery and then we can go on with the magical readathon. Pretty snow. Okay. Okay, so let's continue on, see what happens. Okay, so it says your vision turns momentarily grayscale before exploding in vivid colors of magic. Finally, you are going home. Even though this platform is much smaller than the station behind you, somehow everything seems louder and busier here. You spot familiar faces until you gaze until your gaze lands on Hermione's and you get going towards her. Neville has already been looking for his toad Trevor for a while, it seems, and an oddly dressed blonde girl has been turning around on the same spot while her equally blonde father applaud her. You keep glancing back, but you can't seem to see Ron. Come on, let's get a compartment before they fill in. He will find us later, Hermione urges. 
You get a bit panicky once the train starts moving and there's no sign of Ron, but after five minutes or so, his out of breath head pops in. There you are. I've been looking bloody everywhere for you two. After filling Ron in on your summer and Ron suggesting something that appeared crazy until it weirdly started making more sense, Dobby is working for the Malfoys? You buy your friend some chocolate frogs and continue to joke around to the soothing clicking of a steadily moving train. The terrain outside has changed from urban to hillsides, and as you're passing the aqueduct in content silence, what do you want to do next? So we have play a game of wizard's chess or chat to Hermione about your summer reads while Ron naps. I personally would chat to Hermione about my summer reads. I'm more of a checkers person, not a chess person. So yeah. And I love to talk about books. <laughs> Oh, I've read so many of the course books for the next year, of course, but Gilderoy's books were my absolute favorite. He's a natural. I think my favorite might be Gadding with Ghouls. Oh, but Magical Me was splendid, too. I really cannot decide. Hermione tells you that there's actually a book club that's formed at the very end of last year's Hogwarts that focuses on some magical fiction literature. It meets once a month, except during exam sessions, obviously. If you're keen on exploring some fun and interesting books outside the classes, you should join. You were promised that there wouldn't be any Gilderoy books included. Do you want to join? Mm, maybe next year let's some, play some Wizard's Chess or sign me up. Sign me up. So the reading prompt is Book Club Pick. Buddy read a book or read a book that has been picked by a book club of your choice recently or in the past. It can be an online book club or a local one. Okay, so buddy read a book. Hmm. Oh, I can buddy read with Marty. Okay, let's see what else we got. Wonderful. You have joined the book club. They call themselves the Book Owlery. You kind of missed the first read over the summer, but Hermione has lent you her copy of The Legend of the Serpent and told you it's a story compilation about this chamber of secrets that Salazar Slytherin has allegedly built into the dungeons of Hogwarts. She says all this with a very skeptical look on her face, but she admits it's an interesting read. The light outside your window starts to dim as you keep moving north. It has started to rain, and you've never been more appreciative of the warm and cozy train compartment that's shielding you from the winds and rain outside. Might as well read a little bit now. And congratulations, you've completed Chapter 2. Enjoy your ride by Hogwarts Express with beautiful views of the wilderness of Scotland until Chapter 3 becomes available. And that doesn't become available until doo -doo -doo -doo, the 15th. All right. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read A, Car A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer for my urban fantasy. And then for my buddy read, they said you can actually like read one that you've already started. And I've already started, I guess you could say buddy reading a, a book with Marty. We're listening to Clear My Name by Paula Daly or Daly. And um, it's about two women. One is in prison for murdering her husband's girlfriend. And the other woman is, um, she works for a group. Uh, of like I guess lawyers or whatever that take on cases that have that they believe might deserve a second chance like somebody was wrongly accused or you know wrongly charged for this crime or whatever and she's investigating into the case of her name's Tess Tess is investigating into the case of Carrie to see if she believes if Carrie actually did this or not and deciding whether to take her case and it's interesting so far 
also it takes place I guess in Tess's hometown and she's got secrets and stuff there that she's having to face and also this is set over in the UK so it's very British <laughs> but I'm going to go and I think I'm going to read for a little while while I wait for all of my data to import from my camera onto my computer. All right, I'll talk to you later. December 13th, Friday the 13th, and though I'm not well by any means, I am feeling like this much better. Um, I woke up this morning with a terrible headache and stuff, but I took a shower and took some Tylenol and that kind of got rid of the headache, but my ear and my throat still hurt. But hopefully the antibiotics are kicking butt and I'll be feeling even better tomorrow. We'll see. But have all of this to open and I thought why not do it in front of my a Christmas tree also I've read a little bit more of a curse so dark and lonely I'm only on page uh, about to start page 113 chapter 14 of this it's going back and forth between um, Harper and Wren Harper is our main character she has cerebral palsy and um, she's had some surgeries to kind of help with the developmental issues with her leg, but it's still you know, obvious that she has issues. And she's from Washington, DC, and she overhears this couple out in an alley. And next thing she knows, the woman gasps and then is silent. And Harper sees the man trying to carry this wo woman who is now unconscious away and he she tries to stop him which ends up getting her kidnapped instead of this other woman and she gets taken to a different world uh, called Emberfell and there Ren is the prince and his kingdom is cursed and all we know is that there is this beast which I'm pretty sure that they've hinted already that Ren turns into this beast and has killed many people there's not anybody left except for him and his like first in command um, left in the castle everybody else has been killed or I think run off but he is stuck repeating the same season over and over again until he breaks this curse but he's just been informed by the en this enchantress that this will be his last season so if he doesn't break this curse then he I guess will become a monster permanently something like that though Harper hasn't seen the monster yet she's only seen Prince Wren and his first in command Grey but I'm enjoying this so far. I actually started listening to an audiobook that completes the challenge, um, Happy Kwanzaa, which is to read a diverse read. And I read a, or listened to the audiobook of a nonfiction uh, memoir by Sharon Robinson. This is actually based or aimed for middle grade, but I enjoyed it. It's Child of the Dream, a memoir of 1963. This is by, I said, Sharon Robinson. She is the daughter of Jackie Robinson, and he was like the first African American that was allowed onto the like white baseball teams. And this really follows like her family and the part they played on the civil rights movement. And I quite enjoyed it. I I think I would give it four stars. It was an interesting read. It was informative. It also has these pictures throughout of like um, 
her and her family and other things. So this is like her and her mom and her dad and her brother. And there's Jackie Robinson with Martin Luther King Jr. The March on Washington and uh, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Yeah, just a whole bunch of pictures. I thought that was pretty neat. Oh, and I actually found on Hoopla the audiobook for A Royal Christmas Wish by Lizzie Shane, which is the uh, Once Upon a Book Club Christmas book box thing. So I'm thinking hopefully I can listen to this as well this weekend and open up those gifts for you in this video. Okay, now on to this pile of goodies. Alright, let's start with this mail. I don't know what this is. It's, I don't know. Oh, this is something that I ordered off of um, Indiegogo. Okay, so I ordered these things before they were made. <laughs> and uh, I got one for Marty and one for Xander, which Xander doesn't have a phone at the moment, but eventually he will. And then I got this one for me. So it is the Koala by Hang Time. And it looks like this. And it goes on your phone. And it clips to you or whatever. And it's supposed to keep your phone from dropping. It's got a cute little face on it too. Anyway, I thought it wouldn't be a bad thing to have. And then I got a pinch me box, which if you don't know what the pinch me box is, uh, I think it's like the first Tuesday of the month, they have samples and you just select which samples you want and they send it to you and then you review the samples. That's it. It's free. Uh, so they sent me some ketchup. <laughs> Got okay, two little packs of ketchup, uh, Heinz blend of veggies, ketchup. Comes with a recipe for zucchini fries, some pesto, creamy ricotta, and arugula from Barilla. Some extra virgin olive oil from Colbram Estate. And some chlorophyn 12 allergy medicine. Because your girl always needs some allergy medicine. <laughs> and they gave like four pills of this. And then we got like a couple of coupons. I got $4 off that olive oil. A dollar off the pesto. And a couple recipes. And a dollar off some Barilla Ready Pasta Pouch. So those are all of those samples. And then I have this, which I'm not really sure what this is either. That's not for me. That's something that Marty's parents sent to my name. But it's Marty's Christmas present. Alright, until I get to the bigger box, I'll go ahead and open the gifts. So he didn't have these numbered, he just gave me the two because I didn't get yesterday's gift because he forgot. So I'm just going to open this one first and say it was yesterday's. It's very well packed. Oh cool! Hold on. This is very cool. So it's this little like figurine thing with the owl on it, which very much looks like Hedwig, I think. And then a stack of books. And it has a thing here that says, the owl personifies wisdom, knowledge, and human experience or something like that. I can't read all of the stuff because the owl's on it. But it's also like a little, like you stick stuff in it. Cold. 
in the book like one, one of the books here has a little bookmark hanging from it yeah it's super cute this is going on my shelf and then I'm guessing this one's a book okay we got the light between worlds they thought their story had ended it had only just begun by Laura E Weymouth and this is so pretty it's got deckled edges it's gray with a silver font let's see this says six years ago Evelyn and Philippa Hapwell cowered from airstrikes in a London bomb shelter but that night took a turn when the sisters were swept away to a strange and beautiful kingdom called the Woodlands, where they lived for years in a forest straight out of myth and legend. When they finally returned to London, no time had passed and nothing had changed. Nothing except themselves. Now Evelyn is desperate to return to the Woodlands no matter what it takes, while Philippa just wants to move on. But when Ev goes missing, Philippa must confront the depth of her sister's despair. As the weeks unfold, Philippa wonders if Ev truly did find a way home or if the weight of their worlds finally pulled her under. I think it sounds really good. Uh, there's a blurb by Melissa Albert on here that says, an achingly lovely, lovely take on finding your own world. I love this beautiful book. And it is gorgeous. Oh. Fun. Okay. Now on to this. This was something that I ordered. Um, I talked to Marty about it before I ordered it. I originally thought of getting it as a gift, but I, I wanted to make sure that he was on board with this. Um, and he'd want to do the stuff too. Because otherwise it would be a waste of money. <laughs> but they had a deal where you got... Um, if you got the three books and the camera then it was like a bundle deal so they have these books uh what are they called exactly um like adventure books or something like that uh they have one for couples they have one for family and they have one for friends it's oh they're called the adventure challenge okay so here we go. Here's the Adventure cha Challenge Family Edition, Couples Edition, and Friends Edition. And let me open up one and I'll show you. So they come in these really nice boxes that I guess you can keep them stored away in, which is pretty cool. And then here's the book. I opened the Couples Edition one. So the way this works... So for the couples one, it's like a date thing. And it shows here like a little introduction and the rules. Uh, rule number one is disconnect to reconnect. The purpose here is to unplug from everyday life, connect and have fun. Put those cell phones on airplane mode. Ste rule two is no take backs. If you scratch off a date, you have to do it. If you don't feel like it too bad, do it anyway. Discover something new about yourself. Number three, document, document the journey. Take a picture and write about each date in your journal. This book here is to help you create and collect lasting memories. Four, show it off. Upload the photo of your adventure to social media and tag, hashtag, ad, the adventure challenge. So you'll get a box like this and you scratch it off. and But it'll tell you like above different things. Like this one, this is just the example. But it shows here, money is 0 to $15. Uh, and it'll tell you what these things mean. So the dollar sign is the approximate cost of the adventure. Uh, the time means the best time of day or night to do the adventure. This one says before 9 p.m. This says the approximate duration of the adventure, three to four hours. And then you've got other little descriptions of different icons, what they mean. Um... And then you have your table of contents. So here's uh, which is like the name of all the dates. So here are how the dates go. You go and you pick one that you want to do. You scratch off the thing 
you do the date you take a picture with the camera that you get and this uses a just like I forget what kind like Fuji instant X or whatever film um, take a picture peel off things stick it on there and you write some notes about your time anyway I forget how many are in here but I thought that was fun a cool idea and as I said it's not just for couples you can do the friend one or you can do the family one you could do any one by itself or you can like double up and get two of the books or you can get all three of the books but here's some examples because they showed like a scratch off one in the back uh, an example of a family one is play your choice of dodgeball or tag using Texas snowballs to make Texas snowballs fill several tube socks with all-purpose flour then tie a knot at the top everyone must wear black t-shirts so that the snow will clearly show when someone's tagged for added effect order colored chalk and fill up nylon pantyhose this will make the powder explode like crazy an example of one of the couple ones is a uh, helpless baker make a homemade pie together easier said than done one of you has to mix all the ingredients by yourself blindfolded while the other person can only give instructions by leading with their hands the leader can only use three directive sentences the whole time the person with the least amount of cooking experience has to be the blindfolded mixer <laughs> funny and then for the friends edition one of the examples is grab a blanket some dice and pack some of your favorite foods you're going on a random dice picnic choose a starting point anywhere and roll the dice the number you roll is how many paces you must take the rules are as follows roll the dice a total of 50 times if you roll 7 to 12 walk straight ahead five steps if you roll 5 to 6 turn left if you roll 2 to 4 turn right if you roll doubles double the amount of steps you take if you came up against an obstacle like a wall or a freeway turn 180 degrees and finish your steps slash turn you must follow the path the dice lay out before you before you this can mean climbing through hedges crossing parking lots etc be careful to avoid trespassing and dangerous places once you arrive make sure to take some pictures of your spot that sounds fun and kind of crazy but fun okay so that's all that i have to open and all i have to show you so i'm gonna go and i need to get a video uploaded so i'm gonna do that and maybe listen to some of the audiobook of a royal christmas wish and clean up this mess that i just made so i've been listening to uh, a royal christmas wish and i'm currently on page 68 and this is where the first gift comes in so it says um this older woman has just gotten her bracelet back it's like a snowflake bracelet and um she's dangling it in front of our main character jenny's um in front of her face and it says she moved her wrist and the snowflake dangling from her fingers began to spin the light flashing off the diamonds hypnotically something about it seemed to snag my attention and make it impossible for me to look away as she spoke in a smooth lilting voice okay so now let's open our gift i'm wondering if it's the bracelet and it is so it has like a one of those pulling adjustable Little bead things this is really pretty okay so here's how it adjusts and here's what the bracelet looks like I think that's really really pretty and sparkly beautiful Okay, now the next gift is not until page 272, so probably won't be today, I would guess. I'll probably get that sometime tomorrow. 
Did it just break? Well, that sucks. It just broke. Bummer. I was putting it back on the little card and see if I can show you where it broke. So it broke between one of these little squares right there. That's a bummer though because I actually like that. I'm going to go back to doing stuff. I'll talk to you later. Oh my gosh, these two are just too cute. <laughs> Hi, Tigger. You and Katniss having a lovely nap. So it is like 9.30 on Saturday, December 14th, and I got to the next part in the book where um, I opened my, well, next and last gift. And this says, when the storm retreated, I looked down and found myself in the same magnificent crimson ball gown I'd worn in The Wish. Well, I'm sure that that's not a ball gown in that little box <laughs> so let's see what our gift is right here oh hold on it was actually the sentence before it says that now familiar candy cane scents somehow warm around me even as the snowflake cyclone blinded me and it is a candle and it is La Tante Arie's Peppermint Snowflake Scented Candle. And it looks like this. The cap is wood. And it's just a white candle. It has a very, very faint um, peppermint smell. Yeah, it's really, really light. Maybe it'll smell more when it's lit, but still it's cute. So those are all the gifts that were in this box. I'm still really bummed about my bracelet. I did send them a message on Facebook, but I probably won't hear from them until Monday because it was like Friday evening when I wrote them. I do have another gift, however, to open. Today's gift from Marty. These have been so much fun getting. So it's in this box here. It is this beautiful figurine of a girl. And she's reading. Focus on this. There we go. Like sitting on a, a rock or something and reading a book. This is also going to go on my shelf. It comes with this little placard, I guess, that you can set with it. So on the front, it has this. And on the back, it has this. I've also gotten just a little bit more of A Curse So Dark and Lonely Red. I'm on page, we're getting ready to start page 211 of this. It was my goal to finish this tomorrow but I don't know if that's gonna happen we'll see I've been working on editing my um, come with me cruise 
beginning of the magical readathon, the Tis the Seasonathon vlog, and the Merry Book Miss Readathon, all as one video, because that was all in the same week. <laughs> so that video had three hours and 41 minutes of footage. So it's taking me a long time to edit. And I still have like two and a half hours left of footage to edit through still. So yeah. But I took some time to listen to this while I was wrapping um, some Christmas gifts and eating and that kind of stuff. I'm probably going to go ahead and finish this because it's really close to the end. Yeah, there's only like 12 pages left. So I'll probably finish listening to this. And this is super cute. I can't remember if I told you too much. I mean, I read the back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read the back when I first got it or opened it up for you. But girl meets a guy, turns out he's a prince, and then she meets a fairy godmother and she makes a wish to have that Cinderella moment, that that perfect uh, fairy tale Christmas. She wakes up the next morning and she gets to live that life that she wished for where she's married to the prince and and all of this stuff and well the wish ends at midnight on christmas because she just wished for a fairy tale christmas and then she's trying to figure out how to um uh, well for the first part of the wish she's trying to figure out how this happened and is this real or is it a dream and then when she finally accepts it she starts being really happy about it and it feels like it's where she's supposed to be but then when the wish expires and she has to go back to normal life well the second half of it she's trying to figure out how to make it not expire how she can stay anyway I'm going to get back to this and maybe wrap some more gifts and I will talk to you later. p.m. on Sunday December 15th and I have my next gift to open which I'm pretty sure is a book. Ooh, I've been wanting this. Oh this looks so creepy. It is The Devouring Gray by Christine Lynn Herman. Oh that's so pretty. Oh these end pages they're like spooky woods. And the book is gray, which is fitting. And the font is like a, a turquoise color. Now, I've heard mixed reviews on this. I've heard some people absolutely loved it and others really didn't care much for it. This says, After the death of her sister, 17-year-old Violet Saunders finds herself dragged to Four Paths, New York. Violet may be a newcomer, but she soon learns her mother isn't. They belong to one of the revered founding families of the town, where stone bells hang above every doorway and danger lurks in the depths of the woods. For generations, Justin Hawthorne's bloodline has protected Four Paths from the Grey, a lifeless dimension that imprisons a brutal monster. After Justin fails to inherit his family's powers, his mother is determined to keep this humiliation a secret. But Justin can't let go of the future he was promised and the town he swore to protect. 
Ever since Harper Carlisle lost her hand to an accident that left her stranded in the grave for days, she has vowed revenge on the person who abandoned her, Justin Hawthorne. There are ripples of descent in Four Paths, and Harper seizes an opportunity to take down the Hawthorns and change her destiny, to what extent even she doesn't know yet. The Grey is growing stronger every day, and its victims are piling up. When Violet accidentally unleashes the monster, all three must band together with the other founders to unearth the dark truths behind their family's abilities before the Grey devours them all. And I thought it sounded really cool. And if I remember correctly, there's like a some like 90s nostalgia in here or something like that. I could be wrong about that. But it says, fans of the Raven Boys and Stranger Things rejoice. This is your new obsession, Claire Legrand. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. Now, I have no idea how long this vlog is already probably stupid long and i didn't complete the uh chapter two uh challenges yet i completed one which was the buddy read which was clear my name by paula daly marty and i buddy listened to this but the read an urban fantasy i'm still working on a curse so dark and lonely for that so haven't completed that That'll happen in next week's vlog. Though, for the Merry Bookmas Readathon, I did complete a couple of challenges. So, Clear My Name didn't count for anything, unfortunately. A Curse So Dark and Lonely, when I do complete it, does do a Merry Bookmas challenge. It completes the Do You Hear What I Hear? Read an overhyped book. But, like I said, I haven't completed this yet. I've gotten to page 250 something, uh, 255. So I'm a little over halfway, but I probably won't get much more of that read tonight because when I finish this, I need to film an unhaul video and then I need to pack up and address, uh, books that I am sending off to winners so far from the videos because I am finally able to leave the house my ear still hurts though if my ear isn't better by Tuesday Marty is taking me back to the doctor yeah because it should be feeling better already and it's not it's not as bad but it still doesn't feel great though I'm still taking medicine and all that anyway back to the Mary book miss challenges I completed Child of the Dream, a memoir of 1963, and that covered my Happy Kwanzaa challenge, which was to read a diverse book. And then I listened to A Royal Christmas Wish by Lizzie Shane, and this completes my Frosty the Snowman challenge, which was to read a book with a little bit of magic, because this has a little bit of Christmas wish magic, and loved that. And I also started reading or started listening to another audiobook when I finished that because I needed something to listen to today when I was heading out to the grocery store to pick up a few things. And I got the Mother Daughter, or I'm listening to the Mother Daughter Book Club by Heather Vogel Frederick. And I didn't realize this was actually middle grade and not uh, YA. I thought it was YA. But it's cute. I'm only. Let's see, I marked it. I'm only 52 pages into this so far. I'm about to start. Well, these chapters aren't numbered. They're um, titled by whose perspective. So I'm about to start Jess's chapter. I think that's only the third chapter though. And the bonus challenge for the Merry Book Miss Readathon is Good King Witch Winchislass, which was to gift someone either your favorite book or a book they've been wanting. So I've sent Cody over at Cody's Book Corner, and I'll link her channel down below. I sent her 
um, a graphic novel of Sunny Rolls the Dice, which is about D&D, &D, and I know she's absolutely going to love that, and it's one I really, really loved. And I'm about to send an entire box of books to my friend Clint, who is my co-host for the Merry Book Miss Readathon, and there are some favorites of mine in there, as well as a, at least one book, I think a couple of them are books that I know that he's been wanting. So I've got that covered. And with all of the giveaways that I have been hosting for this month, um, I'm giving lots of books to people that they've been wanting. Sorry if there was an angle change, but I had to get up and get something. So speaking of the Merry Bookmas giveaway, the book I'll be giving away in this video is a Strand signed edition of Pride by Ibi Saboy. And this is, uh, looks like this on the inside. Blue, beautiful, and signed right there. And uh, the only reason I'm giving this away is because I ended up with multiple copies of this book. I got this one as well as the Owl Crate edition, which had like pink here and the hardcover was pink and I just decided to pick that one to keep because I didn't need to but um I can't remember what I gave this it was either a three and a half or four star but this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling it's a um black Latin X remix set in I think it was like the Brooklyn area. Really, really good. I enjoyed it. I'm not a fan of Pride and Prejudice and I really enjoyed this. So this is the book that I'll be giving away in this video. And the keyword in this video wasn't spoken. It just appeared on the screen. Okay. So I think I'm just going to end this video here. I'm hoping it's not too insanely long. But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!